What up, Chubbies? Hey, we got Morgan Bowman in at the Chubby Guy Studios this evening. He's going to tell us all about raising his family and uh, his, you know raising his kids in Japan and the school systems and just all kinds of good stuff. So make sure you tune in tonight to Morgan Bowman. And also, hey, check out our sponsors. We got them linked down below. We couldn't do it without them. And we thank you guys, all the listeners out there. We appreciate you each and every single episode. So take care. See you soon. Hey, Pudge, what time is it's it? It's time for the Chubby Guys Podcast. Woo! I think so. Woo, that's hot. You did, I didn't put much water in there, huh? It's all right. <laughs> Big house. I mean, you know, hey, dude, when you're drinking a whiskey, that, a bourbon that's less than $20, it is a little bit hot. It's going to stay hot. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you're paying for. Yeah, that's right. All right. We try not to bang anything. Hear that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can. Yeah. yeah. Set it down easy. Oh. Where's your taster? <laughs> Then I gotta watch those things will stick. Mine's real bad about sticking. I brought some money. A Japanese money. Yeah. If you're interested in that. Ooh, I wanna see. I've never seen it yet. Huh? I've never yen? seen it yet. Here, I got 10,000. Tyler, go for it. That's 10,000 yen? Yeah, it's 10,000. That's, uh, well, today's exchange rate. That's, well, I don't know what that is. But usually it'd be a, like 100. So if you went to the store, you'd be able to buy about $100 worth of stuff with that. Okay. Huh. So traditionally, traditionally, uh, usually it's like one yen is about one cent. Okay. So if you go to Japan and you're looking <laughs> at the prices and it's like, you know, 200,000, you're like, what the hell? So you just move the decimal point over two. Uh-huh. So 200,000 yen would be like 20 bucks. Two, mm. Was that right? No. 200. 200. No. 200. 200,000 yeah. would, 200, be 200, would be like, yeah, $200. Oh. No. Two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. Right. Okay. Sorry, so our math sorry. skill is low. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <sorry>. You're not <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm usually pretty good at that stuff, but yeah, you got me. So Call ten thousand is a hundred. Every ten thousand is a hundred. Yeah. So. So two hundred thousand be two. So like, there's only three bills. There's a thousand, five thousand, and ten thousand. So that's like a ten, a fifty, and a hundred. And that's the only bills that they have. Okay. Everything else is in coins. Okay. Uh, so I got one coin here with me. This so is see, that's kind of hell. That's kind of hell on the wallet and stuff, man. Yeah. So this 500 yen, that's five bucks. So when you sit down on the couch, you got to be careful. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, you'll lose, you could lose 20 bucks, you know, like that. Just like that. Yeah. So like how do, whenever you get a, a wage or a salary or what. Hey, do you want to help develop your child's athletic ability? Or maybe you want to get off the couch and make yourself a little bit better. They earn the day at AP Prep. Look them up. AP Prep. Dot info. Hey, are you a business owner looking for insurance coverage? Give this guy a call. You know him. You trust him. Jason Gillum, Gillum Insurance, 740-395-0190. Whatever on your job. I mean, do they talk in the millions of yen? Well, yeah. If you're talking about yearly salary, uh, you'd be talking millions or tens of millions, depending on your job. Yeah. Why, why do they do that? Why do they use so many zeros? Well, they're pretty good at math. Uh, unlike us, so yeah, they're just they're just showing off, man. Yeah, really, they're just yeah. doing that as a flex. <laughs> hey, Japanese Zima, I'm, so, Ooh, I'm pretty excited about Zima, this. Man. You go try out, we'll try out. You got yeah. what? What is this? You got what'd you bring him, Morgan? Well, I can't read this, it. He would this have to read is it. Uh, Aoni, uh, Aoni. Aoni. Aoni, which means blue devil. Oh, okay. Yeah, Aoni. IPA, IPA, excellent, man. So, okay, you can and read this, all that. Yeah, so this Zima, uh, you know, in the States, they don't sell anymore. But a Japanese company bought the rights and I guess the formula. So it's made in Vietnam and, yeah, imported to Japan. And then I brought it here. Let's try it. Cheers. 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 Cheers, cheers, old friend. Good to see you. Yeah, (laughs) good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Hey, that's a solid IPA, man. Good stuff. yeah. yeah, dude, they need to reactivate that. You yeah. like a Zima? It, it's not. I don't know if they changed the formula or what, but it is not what you remember. That's good. Oh wait, that one? Yeah, yeah. I'm not a big fan anymore. <laughs> really? Yeah. Sorry. I thought you, <laughs> no, I like I, that. I, I thought you said reactivate. Like <laughs> you're kind of like, ah, it doesn't break my heart to see you drink that. You yeah, know? no, I can get that anytime. <laughs> yeah, oh I'm my probably. god! I mean, there's it's hardly any even carbonation in it. Like the old Zimas used to have, you know, the fizz, well, like they, s- seltzer. That was that the original seltzer. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. I but mean, they, well, they were in a bottle before. Yeah, you, know, you ever yeah. seen it in a can? 
No, never. Not yeah. till today. Mm-mm. That's delicious. I mean, I might Sweet have to have nectar. you send that to yeah. me. Yeah. Sweet nectar. It's only 4%, though, which yeah. uh, I, I don't know. I don't order. remember it being only 4%, but I might have just been younger. You were 17. Yeah. You know. Back in uh, that would get that was probably pretty high back in because your light beers were three two right. I don't know. I don't know the trajectory of how that all went. I just figure if you drink enough of them, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have they have the same effect. They do, yeah. So so you're in town for seven weeks from Japan, and and you ran into right. the chubbies. Okay, I'm here. So yeah. we got in a hell of a conversation the other day about I want to know. I want to know, like, school system. I want to know everything. So, like, I told Chad, I was telling you earlier, I thought of this guy for 25 years walking through Tokyo, through the fish markets. Yeah. Well, it turns out he's not living anything like that. Okay. You know? So, you started off, why did you go to Japan? Yeah, that's what I want to hear. Like, yeah, how so, in the world did you wind so up? So, you go here, you go to school with me until we're in, what, the eighth grade? Eighth grade, yeah. Okay, then you leave and you go where? So, uh, start, start there. Start there. Well, I went to uh, boarding school. Okay. Colorado, uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. So graduated from there, and they had like a school trip. It's kind of like sixth grade DC trip, kind of. Mm-hmm. But the whole the whole class wouldn't go. It'd only be a group of um, you could choose like different places to go. Uh, on the Japan trip, there was like twenty students, a couple teachers, and a couple of the students were actually Japanese that were going to the school that I was, you know, with me. So they're my classmates, and they were, they acted like as our guide and. Uh, helped organize everything and as translators because none of us knew anything i had actually had uh the only thing i knew about japan before that was that like nintendo was there and they made video games and i loved video games and so i was like oh yeah you know japan that sounds cool yeah (laughs) and uh, i had some friends going and what were your other choices that year uh well that year and what year uh, was I don't know. This? this was my senior year this is like march to uh 1999 this is columbine time oh uh yeah yeah i guess so and that just happened in denver which wasn't too far you know about an hour and a half from where i was going to school what was your school like when that happened what was that like uh i'm trying to think uh well yeah i mean it was just like shock i mean i I don't remember you know anything drastic anything drastic like oh lockdown lockdown or anything like that but oh here it even got i mean that got back to even this far and night like the day of oh yeah Hey guys, on behalf of the Chubbies, huge thanks to Geiger Brothers Construction. Give them a call at 740-286-0800. They've been great community supporters, and uh, they are a friend of the Chubby program. So thank you, Geiger Brothers Construction. My God, as a, as a parent of an eight-year-old with a family and, and moving through life, the best thing I ever did was download the McDonald's app. What a breeze. Order for your family. Pull up. They bring it to you. Easy. Download the app today from McDonald's. Really? Oh yeah, I don't, I, mean, I don't a, know. I don't remember that being like that. That was a like big that. freak out in the school world, right? Yeah, I mean, you don't remember that? Well, no, I don't know. I don't remember it being not, anything and, and, like and, that and, drastic. And I would imagine though, like a boarding school would be a little different. Yeah, too. I mean, right? I mean, we're kind of we're kind of secluded, and mm-hmm. it's uh, there wasn't a lot of security. I guess after that, there probably was more. But mm-hmm. when I was there, it wasn't you know security. I don't want to say it wasn't a big deal, but. Yeah, it wasn't like we had armed guards or anything. Huh, that's crazy. I would have thought an hour away it would have been hot hot zone. Right. Now, I don't know. Well, they pretty well knew what who did it, what happened. Well, yeah. All right, so you're a senior. You take off on this trip to Japan. All right. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> All right, yeah. So, yeah, we went on this trip. It was, uh, what was it, 10 days? And I went, and, uh, yeah, it was just, I mean, the whole, sorry, the whole time it was just, blew my mind because you know i didn't just looking around i didn't understand anything i didn't everything i saw was like new and uh and and on top of that you know i was just having a blast because i was with my buddies and we were you know like partying we were going playing pachinko which is like slot machine you know pinball and we go out and stay in these we're saying like a dormitory kind of like uh place so we would just go out to these liquor shops and buy liquor and bring them back to the hotel. Liquor rules are really loose in Japan compared to America. So you guys so, just walking in the stores buying liquor. Yeah. And is, is there a drinking age over there? Or? Yeah, it's uh, 20. But in, 
even when I was 17 or even younger, or not younger, but uh, when I went back again, I've never been carted in Japan trying okay. to buy alcohol. It's just they not, they don't, they're not that concerned. Even 20 years ago, you could buy beer and vending machines and, mm-hmm. you know. It's, so. That's a hot topic over there. Well, you said that's dr- not a hot topic. You said drugs are just, they're not. Oh, drugs. Well, well alcohol is prevalent. A, okay. Like, yeah. it is a big part of their culture. Um, like, sake, sake and, like, mm-hmm. beer and... Uh, yeah, a lot of it's totally acceptable to get drunk and make an ass of yourself. And the next day, no one is going to be like, Oh my God, you should have seen what Pudge did, or you know, oh. whatever. <laughs> yeah, no one, they don't do that. They so don't it is take a little culturally different, then. Like, they, yeah, in that yeah. sense. But in terms of drugs, they are like hardcore. So, you know, if you got marijuana, you'll be treated the same as, uh, you know, like you're carrying Fit crack hole. cocaine or, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Wow. So, whenever you say you've seen all these new things, what were you seeing? Well, that's funny. Um, is you know, I was thinking about how to describe it, and I, I mentioned the DC trip. Uh-huh. You remember that? Yeah. Remember all the things you saw? Yeah, most of them. Yeah. I mean, I mean you, yeah, yeah. But I mean, what that, that wasn't is that what was exciting? <laughs> no, no. So, uh, like I said, one one of the I was trying to draw some parallels to that that trip because you know, for me, I'd been to DC before. And so it wasn't that exciting to see some of those sites. Uh-huh. And I don't really remember where we went. Uh, but what was more exciting was the people we, I was with and like mm-hmm. the good times I had and like spending the night in the hotel with my friends yeah. and, and like even the bus ride. Just the bus living. ride was exciting. Yeah. And, like well, hanging I mean, out. How, how, was, so, how was the piece though? Like, okay, you essentially couldn't read anything. Right. You couldn't speak the language. Right. So, I mean, that had to be. I mean, was that exciting or was that intimidating? Me, before or, cell phones. Well, yeah. Well, it didn't. It didn't matter. It was exciting that uh, I couldn't read it, but it didn't matter because I was on like a guided tour. I had okay, people yeah. with me yeah. that could read for me yeah. and so order it wasn't for scary me. Or anything. Yeah, it wasn't scary at all. But uh, you know, a lot of people might be more interested or more prone to go to like Europe or something. You know, because there's right. there's a lot of similarities. Even sure. though things are different, it's like. You look at uh, French or Spanish, and it's like, oh, well, the same letters. I might be able to guess right. what that says, or uh, mm-hmm. you know, culturally, and even mm-hmm. like, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Or like racially, you yeah. know, you might yeah. be more similar to mm-hmm. you. So right. the food and everything. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, it was a combination of what you know, being with my friends and having such a good time, and that that like totally new not knowing anything kind of experience. So then you come back and you fin- you graduate. Yeah, graduate high school. I went to college and I knew at that, I had already basically decided I was going to uh, major in biology. But after that experience, I was like, oh, but I want to, I want to study Japanese. I want to go back to Japan. Right. So, so you, yeah, you fell already, in love I'd with already, You're like, Hey, look, I'm going back. Yeah. And, um, and maybe I don't know what it, I don't know what it was. And maybe for like for no good reason, I was just like I'm going back to Japan, right? Okay. And I was I'm going to study Japanese. Like I saw, you know, I met I met a woman from America, and she, you know, speaking like fluent Japanese. I was like I want to be like that, right? So I started studying Japanese while, and I minored in Japanese. Uh, but at that point, I'd already picked a college, so I couldn't, um, you know, I couldn't change colleges, and. Uh, you know, they didn't have a major in Japanese, but they had, a study you, abroad, they had a study abroad program in Japan. Where did you go to college? Uh, it's called Occidental College. It's in uh, L.A. Oh, shit. Yeah. So my whole life has gradually been moving west every time I move. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, then, uh, so tell me about the hike, though. So when did the hike hit you? So you go, you go to college. You learn, you're, you're minoring in J- Japanese, right? Yeah. But at the same time, weren't you st- like, I remember seeing you one day out on the highway, just drenched in sweat, wearing a big old heavy weighted <laughs> vest. And I was like, what are you doing? And you were training for that hike. So get me into that. I remember that part. Well, that, uh, well, yeah, I was jumping forward a few years. Um, well, isn't that well, when you like, went? I thought that was whenever you departed. Well, no, and went. I mean, that was, you know, when, when, well, that wasn't the first time I went. Oh no, that was, uh, I'd already been twice and come back twice oh, at that okay. point. Yeah. So the first, well, so I did study abroad first time when I was uh, what twenty junior in college, 
and uh and i went to tokyo and did a homestay for a year and again that like that was awesome as you might Expl- expect e- I mean, explain that what's a homestay a homestay oh, so i was staying with a japanese family like you know they yeah. gave me a room in their house and let me stay there and give me is tokyo you know, just like new york city all the time uh yeah no it sleeps unlike a lot of big uh american cities so the trains they shut down maybe before one o'clock around one o'clock even on the weekends and but it's you know it's the same in like you know number of people it's packed skyscrapers uh, it's more packed yeah skyscrapers but you know, like neon lights and um yeah it's uh yeah it's more it's more dense more dense in new york and just more i would say there's more going on yeah like ev- around every corner there's things are just everything in japan's just more smaller right it's everything's more dense so from cars to streets to shops to chairs to everything everything's smaller and more dense so you can never really be alone or away from anything really nothing is almost there's, almost, a huge there's crowd almost nowhere everywhere <laughs> yeah, I don't want to say it's a huge crowd, but you're almost never uh, out of walking distance of whatever you need. Really? Yeah. Like, I can walk from my house and what, you know, it's similar. I don't want to say it's Jackson. Probably more like uh, Sokerville or something. Okay. You know, I can walk to the supermarket, a DIY store, a convenience store, a uh, clothes store, like Walmart. Like, I can walk to all those places or maybe ride a bike. And go shopping and bring stuff home. And that's your life. That's what you do. Uh, sometimes. I usually drive, but yeah. I got kids and, you know, mm-hmm. buy a bunch of kids, stuff. though, whenever you were right, right, right. living it yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't, I didn't have a car in Japan until like seven years ago, and I've been living there like almost 10 years. So just never, never yeah. So never how, how, did it, how did it progress to the point where you're like, okay, I am moving to Japan permanently? Well, that's, uh, you know, there was never a moment I was like, well, yeah, I'm never leaving Japan. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I never thought I want to leave Japan. Okay. And one time I had someone say to me, I I guess I've been living in Japan on and off for like, I don't know, five, six, seven years. And they're like, oh, when you come back, you're going to have a hell of an experience under your belt. And I thought about it and I was like, well, you know what? Maybe this isn't an experience. This is like... This is my life. Like, yeah, right. you know, like <laughs> right. this isn't, this uh-huh. isn't just a uh, short term or, you know, like a one-time thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm still there. But, still- but you know, once you start having kids and mm-hmm. we, but we built a house and stuff. So, you know, yeah, yeah. It's kind of, now we're stuck there. Yeah. Yeah. Is your, is your wife from there? Uh, yeah, she's Japanese. She's and we Japanese. live, we live near where she's from. Did you meet her there or over here? Uh, I met her. Yeah. There. There. Right. She she uh, she studied abroad once in Canada, so okay. she's a big fan of Canada over America. But uh, we don't argue too much about that. <laughs> but yeah, and she speaks she speaks really good English, and because um, my Japanese is still Aren't it, you it an plateaued. It didn't plateaued a long time ago. Uh, not an interpreter, but sometimes I do. Is she or me? Yeah, I thought one of you is an interpreter, and she. In, in but the, she she probably could be, and I could be for like daily daily conversational stuff but uh i do some translation things and uh proofreading like proofreading things have been translated from japanese into english and kind of check like does that match like okay. that kind of like f- some technical documents or so, something and like you're that. working for a japanese college over there now right yeah but i'm teaching english so uh i try not to speak japanese in class you know right. try to keep them in the I mean, the whole, the only way you can learn a, a foreign language is to be in that environment, which is very difficult in, in Japan because, um, there are few, there are few places where you can go and it's just all English, you know, yeah, how do you turn sense. that switch on and off coming back and forth? Like, I think that would be hard. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm sitting here thinking right now, if I knew another language or what, it's been, it's been one of the things that I've always wondered about is, you know, being bilingual, um, that that it's it's amazing to me um you know i i think we all like going through college we took you know i took i took spanish as my foreign language credit you know but like that doesn't mean i could go to mexico and speak fluently dude you, you, you know what i mean right 
So, like, it just amazes me how people can just flip it, you know, right back and forth. And, well, and they say that Americans are, like, the worst in the world at it. Like, a lot of other people just, you know. Well, I mean, English is the most spoken language in the world. Yeah. But it is not, uh, what, how to say it, it's not the largest native language. Uh, you know, yeah, there, right, in right. terms of native speakers, it's mm-hmm. not, it's not, well, maybe it's in the top five or something, but yeah. So there are billions of English speakers, but most of them are not native. Right. When, right. you know, so as an American, it's kind of like, well, why, why would I? I can travel almost anywhere and I Somebody, don't have yeah. to speak mm-hmm. the local language. I can get along fine. What was, right. the, so, what was the biggest adjustment other than the language? That you had to that you had to adopt, you know, being a guy from from Southern Ohio, you know, what was the what was the craziest thing you can remember having to adjust to? Uh, well, you know, well that's funny because, I mean, I guess uh, socially, sometimes I almost feel like closer to Japanese than American because I get a lot of comments in Japan. They're like, "Oh, you're you're not very American," because in Japan, uh, people aren't very outspoken they're not um they don't like rock the boat you know they don't right get no one's gonna get up and start like a rebellion or something you know like even if they're angry or upset about the situation they might not you know voice it very so so what's a friday night like you know going out socially in japan i mean what are you talking about what is what is a, a hot topic in not a hot topic, but you know what I mean. Like what? So explain to me whenever you say they don't get outspoken, they don't get. Well, they don't. They don't talk about like politics or that kind of controversial stuff. Like uh, what are they talking about? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, oh hell, I don't know. Life, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah kids. Life. You know, especially at you know, my age. Hold on. <coughs> I'm trying to think. Because where, you know, where I live now, we moved there, oh, I don't know, seven years ago. So I'm not, I don't actually have a lot of friends. All my friends, I kind of keep leaving like this trail of friends behind. So my, my Friday night is, you know, pretty boring, staying yeah. at home with the kids. Uh, and then what would mm, we talk about? I don't know. We're just like going out, talking about daily life, work. Letting letting off steam about work, uh, talking about traveling, uh, talking about what sports? They, sports, they, sports, sports. Yeah, they talk about sports. You know, baseball is big. Um, Soccer is pretty big. So they they've play. taken all the negative energy out, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, basically. yeah. I mean, no one. You would never. Like my dad, my dad came once to visit, and uh, we were sitting at the outside at this food stall, and these, you know, there's three young Japanese guys next to us, and he's like, and we, you know, we kind of started talking. I was translating for my dad, and he was like, oh, he's like, tell them how uh, how great I thought with that the prime the prime minister. He did a great job when he went down to Singapore last week or something. I was like. I was like, I don't want to tell him that. Like, don't make me say that. And and I went ahead and said it, and they were just like, you know, whatever. Like, we don't, you know, who cares? We don't even know. We don't even know who the prime minister is. Or like, uh, I was like, yeah, that's a boring topic. What's your dad young think of over there? Oh, he loved it. And uh, it's funny because the first time he visited, it was a long time ago, like in the seventies, he had uh, gone on like a Komatsu tour or something. Like they. Brought him over to look at equipment, oh, and yeah, he course, like yeah. he. I, like, I guess he, he really didn't like it, and uh, you know he had no interest in going back. But once you know he came back, and you know I showed him around, and he he really loved it, and he loved the food, and like you know riding the bullet train, and um, yeah, he he came visit me. I don't know three times, which is a lot for you know mm-hmm. an elderly mm-hmm. person. Yeah, so. and, and you're you're here every year. Right, right, right. But still, yeah, he would make the effort. He and my mom have come quite a few times. So so tell me a little bit about how you integrated yourself into daily Japanese life. Like, I mean, like finding a job, uh, you know, like. I want to know that, about your kids too. But yeah, like, school like, systems. And, yeah, like you know, you you right. All, all of a sudden, it's like, all right, you're living in Japan. That's cool. Okay, well, you got to get a job. Probably you got to uh-huh. do something. Like, how? What was that like being an American? 
trying to well, integrate into that? Do you do you I mean, look I'm not, towards American companies or I mean? Uh, well, yeah. So, <laughs> but I'm I mean I'm never going to be integrated because okay. I am always going to be the white guy. Yeah, yeah. It is like ninety nine point nine percent Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> everyone knows me. My wife is like, oh, you got to be careful. Like everyone, everyone knows me, but I don't know anyone. You know, yeah. kind of situation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So every time I walk around, I assume everyone has seen me. Okay. Or like, is like it I that, must be is like that noticeable. Well, yeah. I is mean, there, is there, I mean, is there, how is, there is there it racism? Not? I mean, well, uh, I would say for Americans, it's almost kind of a reverse racism. So okay. you are ex- you are basically excused for any social faux pas or like, <laughs> they're just like, oh, you know, he's like, an American. Well, no, yeah, you're not expected. <laughs> you're not expected to really follow all of the cultural norms and okay. and if you do, they'll be like. They kind of exact. It's kind of a Japanese thing. They give these really generous, uh, you know. Oh wow, your 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 chopstick skills are so good. You're amazing. <laughs> yeah. And it's like it's like yeah. the first time you ever pick them up, and they'll be like, "Oh wow, you're so good." You know, they're yeah. uh, it. It's that's Japanese culture. So maybe they're a little bit nicer than we are. What do they that's think of us? Yeah, of Americans. Oh, like yeah, big mouth, loud morons. Uh, <laughs> eat. Eat a lot yeah. and yeah, a little bit lazy and um, yeah. Well, those are just not. I don't know why I say everyone thinks that, but yeah. Is it, is, it, is that the big difference? Is here we just eat a lot, we're lazy. Oh yeah, we're like I don't want to say. <laughs> well, I mean, they, well, probably, like they, 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 look at, they look at the portion sizes and stuff, and like, oh my god, what is yeah, the difference? Oh yeah, well, my, <laughs> oh yeah, well, my wife is always always amazed at like even the snacks they give at school and. Uh-huh. Like oh candy eating candy at school like what do you it's like why are we why are you giving sugar <laughs> yeah why are you giving sugar to kids in school yeah. you were telling me they get what two hundred fifty days a year uh, uh that's right uh no it's two hundred thirty so yeah. Ohio is one hundred eighty fifty more than Ohio so uh-huh. ten more weeks of five yeah. days a week oh yeah yeah that's so it's like two two whole calendar months so how do they do their breaks uh well school year starts in April they go to the end of July, and, there's some, and then the summer break happens. So the summer break happens in the middle of the school year, and it's uh, well, about six weeks, and they start mm-hmm. end of August, beginning of September. And then they, and come, then they come back right. to the same grade. They come back same grade, so it's not that big a shock. You know, it's not that big of a beginning. And and when they're on summer vacation, they got like this boatload of homework. They got workbooks. They got to write. They got to do like art projects. They got to write compositions, all all kinds of stuff that they're yeah. supposed to finish by the time they get back. So they're not just sitting at home playing video games. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, my wife was how many hours like, work? How many hours a day are your kids doing school work right now? Uh, well, yeah. So right now, my kids are missing school in Japan, and well, my oldest son is, and he's 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 got to keep up. So he's doing an extra, I don't know, like an hour hour of homework yeah like they probably feel like they're not even going to school when they're here right well but they are going to school oh they love coming no they love coming yeah yeah. yeah, they're just like oh yeah there's no homework and uh yeah Yeah, we can uh, play games and yeah Yeah. and uh part of it i mean my wife is kind of you know one of those tiger moms Mm -hmm. you know she you know kind of really pushes them to Mm -hmm. do the best and you know if they don't do it right like erase it and do it again and it's kind of thing (laughs) i was just like oh come on and, yeah. uh, you know, and when they're with me, I'm kind of like, all right, yeah, fine. That's, yeah, you've been doing it for 20 minutes. All right, let's go. Let's yeah. go do something else. Let's <laughs> yeah. go play games. Yeah. yeah. Like with me, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so Entertain I'm, me. I'm, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of guilty there. But the, so they, what do they do whenever the, you put them in Ohio schools when you come back or, or the ones that can, right? Right. Yeah. So you have three. So you put the top two, you put the eight year old and the five year old in school. Yeah. Five year old can go into kindergarten. The top uh, oldest is in third grade. And you're here, you're here just for a couple months. So you're going to, you're, they're going to be in school for what, five weeks roughly while you're yeah. here. What, what, what will they do comparative to what they do in Japan? Mm hmm. Uh, well, I would, I'll say the math. My son is always talking about how easy the math is. Uh-huh. And they, they, they speak English. Yeah, like fluently. You know, they watch TV in English. They laugh at jokes in English. They tell jokes in English. They spend at home when they're talking to each other. They talk to each other like eighty percent of the time in English. Oh, so cool. so the, the language, like spoken wise at least, is not 
an issue, but right. reading and writing is more of an issue. So, you know, my son in the third grade is comparatively, I'm, I'm guessing, like way behind. Uh, but but like you know, it, it's kind year. of it, it's got to be kind of a good experience for them, though, right? I mean, right. It, it, to, it keeps them on a routine, even though they're you know on a break or, or mm. whatever. I mean, like, do they hate going to school when they're here, or do they enjoy it? Um. Well, yeah, it's hard. Like, to get, to it's just as go, hard to get them up in the okay, morning yeah, yeah. and go to school here <laughs> as it is over there. Have so that friends? is not. If, what have is they made friends? Uh, yeah, they say they have. Yeah. Well, I was asking him, uh, well, who do you hang out with? Or, you know, he's like, oh, you know, so-and-so. And, uh, but, yeah, yeah. so that's not that's not a problem. You so know, you're, you're just giving them experiences. This is just. It's, exp- yeah, this is totally to make them bicultural, bilingual, and yeah. to, I mean, they are Americans in a yeah. political sense. They have American passports. And so when they're so older, you know. They have social I want, security numbers? Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so they're, they're American citizens. Yeah, they are yeah. full American citizens. They're yeah. also Japanese citizens. Do so. you carry dual citizenship yourself, or are you? Uh, no, I have the equivalent of a green card okay. in Japan. Okay, you're allowed to work. Okay. Yeah, I can yeah. do any work. Uh, if I got divorced, uh, no, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, uh, even if I got divorced, you know, I could stay in stay. Japan. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, that's cool. So, like, tell us a little bit about, okay, you... You say you don't know that you can ever be fully immersed in the culture because you're an American. But well, like yeah. but like let's let's talk about like the food. The, okay. The music. Okay. The theater, stuff like that, man. Yeah. Like is it similar to what we think? I mean, you know, I, I assume it's not like going to a Japanese steakhouse every time you go to uh to oh, eat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I yeah. Mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, you know, like how how Americanized is that compared to what the real deal is? Uh yeah, so that kinda well, talking about speaking of hibachi, that is that is a thing in Japan, but that is like the finest high quality like steak dining and so most people don't go there i'm I'm sure there's many japanese people have never been to that type of it's pretty rare uh i've only been i think once in japan okay and uh and there's no there's no like circus show there's no (laughs) smoking volcano or like you know (laughs) there's none of that there's none of that so it's very different and even the word hibachi Mm -hmm. My Japanese students laugh when I tell them that this is called hibachi, because hibachi is like this, this like vase uh, where you know they put like a, basically kind of like a small fire, indoor fire, what they use for heating the room. Oh, it has okay. nothing to do, do with, with cooking. cooking. <laughs> has nothing to do with cooking, and I'm not quite sure where that even came from. Yeah. So there's a word for that type called tepan yaki. Okay. Uh, which just means like a metal plate that you cook on the metal and you Black cook on the metal plate. Yeah, 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 or a griddle. Like yeah, it's yeah, basically yeah. what it means. So um, it, they it just called? think it's comical. Say it again. Uh, Tepanyaki. 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 Mm-hmm. Say it. Tepanyaki. Oh, that's, that's, oh that's Chad's, better than yeah. Chad's got the tongue. Yeah, I don't. No, I don't. I, <laughs> I, I would be more intimidated by trying to learn. Asian that I, like I am the guy you were describing like it would be more comfortable going to Europe or something because I, right. I feel like okay I can maybe figure it out I've always been a little intimidated by going yeah the, to the east man right right or, well you, like, know, like, you know like yeah the food and la- yeah. not just language yeah. but the food and yeah. and uh, yeah just the society the way people act yeah and uh, the way so, so culturally like back to the food obviously like you know hibachi isn't the thing I, I, I assume people eat much healthier there. Yeah, um, healthier, smaller portions. Um, you know, we there's a lot of rice. We we at our house we compared to a normal Japanese house we eat a lot of bread and pasta. But you know, we eat rice probably at least once a week. I mean, once a day. If we eat noodles, if we don't eat rice like twice a day, my wife is like, oh, but we had we already had noodles at lunch. We can't have noodles again. Or like oh, we had yeah. bread at breakfast. We can't have bread at dinner. I'm just uh, like, yeah. who cares? Like, it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're you know, eating rice they'd be totally twice eat. a day. Uh, yeah, I, it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, uh-huh. and they eat just like white rice. They don't put soy sauce thing. Yeah, or they don't make it, it brown yeah. rice. Uh, no, it's just uh, straight white rice. They have they have fried rice, but yeah, they're you know Spanish rice or yellow. I don't know yellow yeah. rice. They don't. You can't even find that in the supermarket. 
What's the, what's the thing with rice? Why are they so, such big rice eaters? Well, I don't know. It's not just Japan. That's just like a Asian, they produce, Asian thing. They, I mean, they produce a ton of it. Yeah, I mean, it's just easy to grow. And mm-hmm. uh, I guess some of those other variants of rice, you know, they're not from there. So they never, I guess they never caught on. Well, I'm just, I, mean, I mean, I just—I know they always ate rice with everything. I'm just like, why do they eat rice? Like, I mean, I like rice. Don't they, get me wrong. Well, I mean, they—they they grow it in abundance. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, I guess they're different than us growing or eating corn. Corn, right? You know, you've seen that corn yeah. video yep. that uh, yep. it's corn. It's <laughs> yeah. big lump of nuts. That's funny, <laughs> Dale. So, uh, so like, have you gotten into the Japanese music? Are you no, still listening to a lot hate, of American music? Or yeah, I, I hate Japanese. I don't want to say I hate it, but most of it is pretty. I don't know. Um, I, I, like I imagine it'd be like like uh, techno type stuff or something. Is that true or not? Nah, uh, techno. I don't know. Like you know, like K-pop, like boy bands, oh, and um, okay. you know that kind of stuff. And yeah. just I don't know. I'm a classic rock guy, and I just yeah. there's can't, not, there's not much of that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when you go to a bar, what, is, is there anybody singing? Oh yeah, karaoke is big in Japan, but totally karaoke in Japan is uh, actually karaoke is a Japanese word. Did you know okay. that? Okay, no, I didn't. So in Japanese, it's called kara oke. And kara means empty. Oke is actually short for orchestra. So it means empty orchestra. <laughs> but in English, we call it you know, karaoke. Mm-hmm. And uh, so in, in, in Japan, karaoke is done at a karaoke box where you go with a group of friends. You know, this is something that people do on Friday night. They go, they might go to dinner and then afterwards, Usually, when you go out drinking with your buddies, you do kind of like, uh, you know, bar. And I don't want to call it bar hopping, but you you'll have like the first party, and then they'll be like, "Okay, who wants to go to the second party?" And then they'll go to like karaoke. So you and your friends will rent this box, those kind of one room, mm-hmm. kind of squeeze in, and you guys will you know bang that's, it out. That's like, your party. That's a party, and you know they'll bring you rinks. You can get like all you can drink for thirty bucks for like two hours. And they'll wait, you know, oh you just, there's a phone. You just get on the phone and you tell them what you want and they'll just bring this big tray of drinks and oh like my. food or whatever. You'd love it. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds wonderful, man. Yeah. 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 So, Why is anybody like a bar? This? <laughs> yeah. So the bar, bar karaoke is not that big a thing in Japan. Yeah. Like, huh. You go yeah. to a specific karaoke place. They have the boxes and they serve. Yeah. Drinks. I mean, that's all it is. They have like. 20 I mean, in Tokyo they might have like seven story buildings that's all karaoke yeah. and uh, you rent out that space for a certain amount of time and or yeah, you just call feed in you and drinks. be like yeah. yeah you rent you they have this big menu and you're like you want this drink package this one or this mm. one and then and uh, yeah it's a pretty good deal I'll tell you that yeah. are they Ubering and lifting over there or nah what they? uh-uh what do they uh, do Uber Eats yeah is alright but uh, yeah the taxis they got the you know taxi companies they got rid of uber they don't allow that any kind of like private vehicles for uber you know taxi do they have do they have christianity in japan do they have it yeah oh yeah like uh uh, do you have churches there are churches they're pretty rare compared to temples and shrines sure um so what are they worshiping well the shrines are for shinto which is the i guess the japanese religion and the you know originally they believe that the emperor of Japan was a god, okay. and so that that is like a purely Japanese religion. And then the temples are for Buddhism. Oh, oh yeah, you were telling about the Buddhism, but right. you're not so, a Buddhist. But no, but you know but, the, the religion inside and out pretty much. No, no, I wouldn't say again. Like, well, the thing about Buddhism and Shintoism is that they're not really group. <clears throat> sorry, group. Uh, you know, group religions where people congregate, okay, uh, like you know, on a regular <coughs> basis to worship together. <coughs> That's just basically Christianity, isn't it? I mean, I think there's a lot of different. I mean, I, I don't know the, the way I understand that. I, I mean, I know nothing about Buddhism or Shin, Buddhism or Shinto, but like my understanding is like like the shrine. Like, isn't that a place where people just? kind of go on their own and it's like self-directed i mean there's monks and stuff there but like it's isn't it it's not like hey we're all meeting sunday at 10 o'clock no exactly you there know, is no the, there is bob evans yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah there is no 
like a weekly service. So, mm-hmm. but you you would go there for special occasions. Uh, New Year's is a big time to visit. Mm-hmm. You know, people want to be there on New Year's Eve, like right when it strikes uh, midnight. Right. And or um, if you have a uh, the birth of a baby, you'll go there to have them kind of. I don't want to say like I guess like baptism kind yeah. of thing. Or um, you, you get married. You know, you get married at a traditionally at a Shinto shrine, mm-hmm. but then you get you'll have the funeral at a Buddhist temple. And, you know, so this, are, pe- this are people both? Yeah, exactly. So okay. this happens a lot in Japanese culture where they borrow things from other cultures. They borrow the good things. Okay. Uh, you know, and, <laughs> well, you know, Shinto, they're not borrowing anything, but um, especially Buddhism, you know, they, for the funeral, they go to the Buddhist temple because Buddhism, you know, believes in rebirth and reincarnation. Right. So, you know, Shinto doesn't. So yeah, so if you're gonna have the funeral, well, you have it at the Buddhist go ahead and go there. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you're gonna be reborn. Yeah, kind of thing. The stuff is different than what we're used to. Yeah. Well, I mean, just that's what I mean. I mean, it has to be like. How long did it take for the culture to normalize with you? Like you, you I'm sure the first five times or whatever you went over there, like it had to be. Or of course, you spent a whole year there when you were in college, living with a family. That had to be huge. Yeah, that that was. But like, um, w- when did you start feeling as though, all right, man, I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm no longer shocked by this culture. I'm not like sitting here like this guy, like, oh wow, this is so awesome. Like, right, when, right, when, right. When did you feel like integrated in? Yeah, uh, yeah. There's not much that really shocks me nowadays, but yeah. um, well, you know, you know, I said I was I was just like dead set on going back to Japan, and you know, I did that year abroad, and I just remember the first day I got there, I was just like the hell am I doing here? Like, why, why, yeah. <laughs> why, why did I want to come back here? Like, yeah. and now like, I'm not with my friends. This oh. I'm, uh, you know, the experience I'm having now is nothing like the experience I was having, you know, a few years ago when I was in high school and I was really like questioning myself. And, um, so, but you know, I got, you know, had culture shock, uh, after, you know, it was exciting and, and there were a lot of new things and had a little bit of culture shock. But I got over it and my Japanese got better and I made a lot of friends, like Japanese friends. And yeah. um, I joined the Ultimate Frisbee Club uh-huh. and, and you know, I was playing sports and, uh-huh. and made friends with them. And, and so then I went back, graduated, came back. And, and again, I was like, I want to relive that experience. I want to go back to Japan again. I had such a good uh-huh. time in Tokyo. I uh-huh. still want to do this. And my Japanese is getting better. So I want to go again after I graduate. And I went back and they sent me, I, I applied to this, um, to be an English teacher. That's the easiest way uh, you were asking yeah. about like jobs. Yeah, the yeah, easiest yeah. way to get your foot in the door, well, you sleep except before COVID, is to become an English teacher if you're from America, right? Because they're always hiring English teacher because English education is a big deal in, mm-hmm. in Japan. So, you know, I applied to be this English teacher at a public school the uh, the board of education the local board of education hired me mm-hmm. and you know they sent me to like some city i'd never heard of and i had spent so little time outside of tokyo it was like starting all over i was just mm-hmm. like again i was like what the hell is yeah. going on i was like why am i here <laughs> this sucks yeah, uh, yeah and actually yeah that those two years were not the best yeah, uh, my yeah. times in japan uh but it it really opened my eyes to what was it normal lonely? normal life outside of Tokyo yeah, is. Yeah. Was it just lonely? Yeah, and um, yeah. Again, this happened a couple of times in my life. I keep moving, and I keep thinking like I want to re. I don't want to say like relive, but like I want to keep that experience going or to mm-hmm. have the same experience again. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I've been disappointed. Yeah, I think I can do that, yeah. and I think I can plan it. And so I, you know, apply or do mm-hmm. whatever. And I get there, and I'm just like, oh, this. I've just got to make this because, good now. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. I had already been in Japan, in Japan for like a year, uh-huh. and when I got there, yeah, I was with a lot of other uh, Americans and like New Zealanders, other uh-huh. English speakers, uh-huh. and it was their first time being in Japan. So to me, they were just like, like babies. I was just yeah. like, you guys, you guys, you guys know nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I was yeah. Just like, oh, they're like, oh my gosh, still like this is this food or you know this is so cool, and I'm just like, no, 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 this is like. This is nothing. There's nothing new here. Yeah. Uh, I am not. You know, I couldn't connect. I couldn't relate with them. Uh-huh. And and uh, you so, big yeah. them. Well, yeah, you, were, you, yeah, you. I don't want to sound. Yeah, I don't you were just on. Like a, you were on. You were on a different just, plane. I mean, it was well, just yeah, totally it was just, different. Yeah. yeah, and it wasn't that. It was like 
better than them. It was just, uh-huh. we were having a different experience. And um, yeah, I was spending a lot of time with with them or they were spending a lot of time together, but I was like, oh, I can't, I can't do this. So I did that for like two years and I was like, I gotta do something new. And uh, so I quit. And that, after I quit that job was around the time you saw me covered in sweat with a backpack walking on the oh, railroad so you'd track. Already, I, see, I had no idea you'd already been living there at one time. I thought, I don't know. I just kind of lost track of what what was going on. I was not. Well, yeah, you wouldn't have known all that. Uh, So I'd already been in Japan like three years. I was like, well, I want to do, you know, I want to go, I don't know, do something. I'm young and and they have this pilgrimage. You know, in Japan, there's four main islands. uh, And on the smallest of the main islands, there's this 88 temple pilgrimage. So 88 in in Buddhism is an auspicious kind of sacred number. And there's these 88 temples that you can go around and you're, you're supposed to visit, you know, well, that's what happiness or whatever. Right. So I thought I'd come back to Jackson and my plan was to, you know, go back to Japan and do this. And it's supposed to take two and a half, about two and a half months if you walk it. So I was, I was training for that when you, when you saw me. So tell me about that one whenever you went back over. So that would have been what? How old were you? I don't know, 26? So it would have been what, uh, 2005? 2005, 2006, 2007, yeah, something like that. So you take off just to do the trip, not to move there, right? Right, right. So I was going there as a tourist. Just to visit. And so I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't work if I wanted to. And, right. you're, and you're going to the 88 temples on that island. Right, right, right. So I was on my way, and I, I was stopping to see some friends and staying at their houses. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, a couple of days before I was going to leave, I, I'm like, my eyes started to hurt and like, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't open like any kind of light was really hurting my eyes and went to see a doctor and they're like, Oh, it's just pink eye. And it got worse and worse. And like, seriously for like, I couldn't, I couldn't function because I couldn't, any kind of light was just so, so bad. So yeah, the whole trip got canceled. Uh, but I, I couldn't go home. I was getting treatment for, it was this inflammation of my, in the eye Uh and uh but i was telling pudge the other day about how i didn't have insurance in america i didn't have insurance in japan yeah yeah, yeah. and so but i was going to see not just a normal optometrist uh what you call it ophthalmologist Uh i like a you know special eye specialist and um you know so i would go see them and get the medicine out of pocket for like 50 60 bucks Oh my. With no with no insurance, <laughs> and uh, I'd tell my Japanese friends, they'd be like, "Oh my gosh, that's so expensive." Like, they, thought, no, they, were, no. they were appalled by it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and but uh, so it's amazing how uh, yeah how cheap healthcare is in Japan. Even if do, you don't do Japanese have. people get sick? Or well, just not so like healthy? not like Americans. I mean, mm. their their longevity is one of the longest mm. you know in the world. Um, what if it's because the they're skinny? I don't probably well, have something to do with the heat. Yeah, a, but now that now they are smokers, right? Uh, yeah. Even today, uh, Japan a lot and a lot of those kind of social norms. Japan is usually like twenty years behind America. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know when even but nowadays it's gotten to the point where in restaurants you can't smoke. Okay. Uh, trains so you can't there. smoke. Okay. They're get they're getting there. But, but you they could have, have, you could up until recently smoke in a restaurant. Well, depending on the restaurant, yeah. Well, percentage or, of the population or, that smokes probably higher than here now, right? Oh, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean. They yeah. vaping? Uh, yeah, e-cigs and stuff are getting pretty popular. Are getting hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. But yeah, depending on, I'm sure there's still bars where you can go and smoke. Yeah. yeah. There's probably none left in the United States, is there? Uh, Vegas. Yeah, I don't yeah. You can smoke in New Vegas. New Orleans, Vegas. Yeah, gambling. Uh, you know, the casinos. casinos? Yeah, yeah, I guess. I'm glad they don't smoke in bars. I, you forget that it was even a, a thing, man. I mean, I can't just, imagine sitting there like right inside anymore with somebody smoking. It's weird for me in Vegas. I've been out there a couple of times the last uh, few months for shows. Mm-hmm. And it always hits me weird, man. You walk in the casino and there's people just, you know, and you get this smell of smoke. And those rooms are huge and filtered and everything. But it's just kind of like, man, I can't believe there was a day you used to walk into Bob Evans to eat breakfast and people were just. One side fine. of the room. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. smoking over here. Yeah, 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 smoking yeah. over here. I was like, what's the point? Yeah, I know. Uh, but even like, but even now on, on, say, like the bullet train, uh-huh. uh, they'll have a smoking compartment. 
where it's like okay. that, but yeah. they have like a vacuum that's like <laughs> sucking it. You don't even air. know it's air, probably. I mean, if you go in there, you but mm-hmm. yeah, you you wouldn't know it. Uh, up yeah, and so up until a few years ago, they would still have the smoking car. Yeah. yeah, a smoking car where any everyone can just smoke and it'd be you know just like a cancer Hot box. Yeah. yeah. So what what was all right? So let's get back to this hike. Did you wind up taking the hike after your eyes got better? Or you never got to do it. Well, no, I ended up. They got a little bit. They yeah, they got better pretty quick. Uh, but they were like, oh, you need to just keep coming back and you need to keep um, you know getting medicine and stuff. So I couldn't I couldn't do that. I ended up going to the first temple. And I got they give you a stamp, and mm-hmm. uh, so I got that. And then, but I didn't have time to like do the whole thing. Yeah, so yeah, I went back really. like around Christmas or Thanksgiving or something. Uh-huh. So did you stay uh, there? I was, there, there, I was still now? there for like two months. I was there for like two months getting, you know, like getting your medical stuff. treatment yeah. stuff. <laughs> right. And then you came back here again. Yeah. Okay. So that was just a touristy trip. You came back over here again and then you just decided then like, well, I was like, I still want to go back. And I, but, and I had found, uh, I had a job. I had my eye on. Um, it was working at a university, this international university, uh, where it's like 50% Japanese and 50% international student, yeah. like, um, what do you call it? Like exchange. Well, I don't know. Exchange student, but not exchange, but yeah. they're there full time. So anyway, I got a job there and, um, I didn't know what I was applying for. Like human resources in Japan is really weird. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, I applied to work there, but I don't know what I'm applying to be. Like they're, I'm just, they're just going to hire me and tell me this is your job. Okay. So Ooh, okay. they put me. Interesting. Yeah, you know, I wanted to be in like, uh, like student student um, student services. Yeah, you know, because I had been a student in Japan and I thought, oh, that'd be really cool to like help other students right. living in Japan with their <coughs> problems, stuff like that. Yeah. Well, they put me in the admissions slash like recruitment uh, office. Okay. Which I'm not. I'm not a salesman. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, you you want me to go, you know, around and mm-hmm. like sell your product. I was like, yeah. that's a bad choice. But that's just you know, they don't that's just the way they do human management, like mm-hmm. traditionally in Japan. They mm-hmm. they they switch people around a lot. And so I was this I was working in the admissions office for four years at this university, which was which was awesome, uh, because they sent me on all these like trips abroad (laughs) so i travel like they send me traveling abroad like all the time to either yeah visit high schools and give presentations Mm -hmm. or uh go interview applicants yeah like check you know they had so it turns out you kind of liked it then well yeah yeah no i loved it but another weird thing about employment in japan is that if you're not a full-time employee if i was i was on like a one-year contract after five years there's some strange rule that they have to make you full time. So after five years is up, they basically just like let you go. They're like, oh, you can't renew <laughs> after five years. Sorry, because if we did, we'd have to like keep you forever. Yeah. So uh, it's really. Do weird. they have social security and stuff like that? Yeah, they got a uh, national pension. So I pay Same in. Thing. Right. So yeah. So I pay into the national pension system there, which means I don't have to pay here they have like an agreement with america so yeah. if i did there's some i don't know there's some convoluted formula that if i did come back to the states and wanted to collect social security i could like use some credit like i don't know how it works but what uh what, what age can you retire um so they have mandatory retirement at age 65 mandatory Japan. yeah you 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 cannot be in the workforce. <laughs> You're Basically. washed up, man. So, yeah, no, yeah. So especially uh, in the public and uh, public uh, sector, mm-hmm. that you yeah That's yeah sixty five awesome. you're done and but you can you can come back as like a consultant or you know some mm-hmm. like plush like bullshit job. So you around. don't you don't walk into Walmart's over there and see an eighty year old greeter. Oh no, yeah no. Oh, but well, no, I don't want to say that. Because no, you definitely see uh, elderly people working like at convenience stores, so they do have, you know, um, what do you call it, social security, oh. but yeah, uh, for a lot of times it's not enough. So oh. people and plus people, they're you know, healthy. Japanese people, yeah, they're they yeah they're healthy. They, they're not even though they're quit. even though yeah. they're like seventy or something, they're still they want to be they want to be active. They don't want to you know retire. They don't want to. So so as far as you know your transition. The Japanese culture that you've had several experiences or you had several experiences, one of which you, you lived with a family there. 
Now, like, was that family, does that work like a an exchange type thing like we're familiar with here? Like, did they, did you eat meals with these people and get close with them? Or did, did you just basically rent a room off of them? Um, so, yeah, like, cost-wise, that was just part of the program. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, I would eat meals. Like, the mother would cook breakfast every day. Yeah. And... Um, what, I mean, was that eat. was that awkward or was that did that I, help to yeah. assimilate? Did she just yeah, look at you and go, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or was she yeah. like Morgan? Did like, did she, did, eat? Yeah. yeah, did she point to an <laughs> egg, point to an egg or something, <laughs> and then point to the? <laughs> you know, no, no, I you know we didn't get like super close. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they. I was, was like, I was like, I was like their. Oh, so their family was so we we, we don't. In Japanese families, they don't call people by their first names. They okay. just say like father, you know. Even the father will say, you know, hey, hey, mother, you know, mother. What's he called? What's he called? Son, son, like, son one, son two, son three. Was he doing? Well, that? no, that for the kids, they call them on the first name basis. But okay. even if I'm talking to my kid, well, I don't speak Japanese to my kids. But when my wife is talking about <laughs> me to my children, she calls me dad. Okay, like go talk. She'll be like, go talk to dad. Even though I'm not her dad, yeah. right? So they call people, um, yeah, not out of their. Uh, they call them their position, not their their name okay. for uh-huh. like the uh, older. So um, yeah, it was sometimes it was awkward, and uh, but yeah, like I said, I was like their seventh or eighth exchange student, so they yeah. they weren't super excited about me. Yeah, you know, uh, like, yeah, yeah. They were they, like quizzing you and stuff. Yeah, or... they weren't like, oh my gosh, it would they, and they had lived in America. Okay. And uh, I think part of it was they just wanted to help student, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, they had gotten help when they were in America okay. Okay. and living as a family and they wanted to kind of like pay it back. Yeah. And, well, um, I mean, was, was that experience though? Like, were they able to give you any advice or anything that was helpful or? Well, yeah. I mean, was it just yeah, a if place I, to live? I mean, well, no, I'm, um, uh, yeah, if I, you know, if I had a problem or something like they, you know, they were very, you know, helpful and, mm-hmm. um, uh, I mean, I didn't get into like a lot of personal details, right, but right. like, yeah, they were very accommodating and, um, you know, they understood, they understood kind of like how I felt being kind of, you know, it's strange to live in someone else's house, sure, let alone, sure. let alone when it's like totally different culture. Yeah. You know? yeah, it's so, like, yeah. So they were very, I think it's wild. You know, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, you know, but I, I was lucky I had my own, you know, private room and, um, yeah. So we got along fine. We never had any like confrontations. You know, some people like they, uh, well, my wife tells this story, you know, she, she was in Canada, so mm-hmm. she had a, a homestay and in the homestay family, they'll get, they, they don't make money doing, doing mm-hmm. that, like hosting mm-hmm. students, but they'll get a little bit of money just yeah. to help yeah, you we'll know, cover, cover the that. cover expense. So my wife tells about how her first homestay family in Canada they would like leave her a hot dog and go out to eat. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> or like some canned food. Oh come like on, man! Food. Yeah. <laughs> so she, you know, so there are situations where things go <laughs> sour. You know, she yeah. she left and like Quickly. went and got you know uh, a much better situation. <laughs> um, but and I knew people that did not get along with our home homestay family or didn't like them. I knew people that got like super close. And okay. you know, made like best friends with her children and stuff yeah. like that. So you were just somewhere in the middle then. Okay. Yeah, I was. I was. I spent a lot of time. I didn't want to be home. I was yeah. just like, I was. Yeah, yeah I w- every day I was calling to be like, oh, sorry, I'm not gonna eat at home tonight. I'm gonna yeah. go out and mm-hmm. you know have fun. I'm, I'm gonna do something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're just using him as a bed and yeah. shower. Oh, uh, hey, 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 don't yeah. don't wait up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically. Oh, one time. Yeah, one time. I came home and I don't know what time it was like 10 o'clock and uh, the ho- my homestay mom was still up and there was like food on the table. I was like, oh my gosh. And and this is, I, I couldn't explain in Japanese. I was just like really simply in English. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Please do not like wait, wait up for me. And and I guess, I don't know if she was waiting up for me or what, but I just felt so bad. Yeah. I was just like, oh my gosh. Like you're waiting for or me. Just some woman like, sitting in there by herself. Yeah, I know. I was just like, oh, with eggs and like rice. Did, did she call you an asshole or anything? No, man, no, like no. That? Like, was she pissed? No, not at all. And she slammed I the don't eggs. know. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Japanese women. Uh, you know, the relate is um, Japan is a very. Uh, oh, what do you call it? 
They're all about pleasing the when, man, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. When, a chauvinist. Chauvinist. Yeah, it's a very chauvinist. It's slowly changing, but um, it's very normal for like the wom- the man to do nothing at home and the woman like to do to do everything. So, oh. a lot of men might expect their wife to be oh okay waiting so, so for maybe, them. Okay. okay. So and I don't know. Maybe she was up waiting for the dad. Uh, but I just felt. I thought yeah. she was there waiting for me, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, no, please don't do that. I come like, on the tour, my like shirt and talk smelling like sake. <laughs> yeah, well, that <laughs> happens a lot. You know, people, like I said, people get drunk in Japan, and no one thinks anything of it. You, They don't even hold it over your head the next day. No, saying. not at all. <laughs> and, like, you, I have a picture. Or you can just Google it. There, you will see, like, these, uh, these people just pass out on trains, pass out on the street, Nobody and, bothers uh, them. Yeah, no one bothers them. Uh, it's is, amazing. Is law it's enforcement this. pretty cool about it too? Like, like yeah. The police if you in pass Japan out, are, like if you pass out on a train, they're not going to be like, yeah, you're going to jail. Why? Okay. Why, why would why is that illegal? I mean, well, like in, in no, a, in, I don't know. In, 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 in the me, U.S., yeah, to you're, me you're, that you're, is yeah. like that is very strange because I I passed out once on a train and mm-hmm. a couple times and mm-hmm. once you know it went to the end of the line and then it came back. And it went past in the wrong direction where I was trying to go. And yeah. I woke up. You know, someone like woke me up. And I was like, well, where am I? I was like, I was like, why didn't you wake me up over there? And he was like, you know, the conductor or whatever was like, you know, that's not my job. And like, yeah, yeah. But, and, uh, uh, but no, I've seen, I've seen trains pull up in the morning. And the people are still like passed up, passed out from the night before. And like I told you, the trains, how does, how the trains close. Culturally, how does that work culturally with their jobs? Well, again, well, like getting drunk. You know, drink. You know, going to work and then after work, going out with your coworkers is a like a key part of daily work. work they're doing work that. in That's Japan. Work, very, right? yeah, very common, especially for career workers. Okay. So, um, what do I mean by career? Like full time. Sure. Yeah, in Japan, in Japan, usually employment is like lifetime. People don't yeah. change jobs a lot. Yeah. So anyway, but. They they go out and drink, and that that like I said, no one holds it against you if you're drunk. So that's like the key, an important time to, you know, let loose again. You know, yeah. tell your boss like, hey, this is bullshit. And or they, whatever. they and they accept and, and, that. Yeah, and they totally accept it. And the okay. next day, all fine. You know, hey, no and one like says the, the train stops running at one, and you might still sleep in the train all night. <laughs> I mean that they is don't not run you out of there? that is not normal. Okay. I mean that's not normal. So, so, um, man, these guys go hard in Japan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. So there's no drugs. So uh, they have people drink and you know they're they're kind of they're kind of lightweights and well, too you know, skinny. Uh, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> you can get there's all these. Uh, you go to restaurants or like I said, a karaoke bar. You can get these all you can drink deals and. Mm-hmm. And you know they like play drinking games stuff. I don't stuff. Know if I call them lightweights, if they have these, all you can yeah, drink. Yeah, Lord, deals. yeah. Uh, it sounds to me like they. I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're serious. <laughs> yeah, they're they're committed, man. Yeah, they I mean, have, they're drinking not, down. Yeah, this is not. I, I think mean, I need to go. This is great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You'd love it. So, are you going to come back on the show, Morgan, before you go back to Japan? May I? Because, well, yeah, I think we're going to need a round two. We're going to need a round two. Maybe Apple Festival. Maybe you could. Maybe you can just be one of our guests during. Are Apple you Festival. taking your kids to the Apple Festival? Uh, Wednesday only. Okay, good for you. <laughs> you won't go. I've on? done it. I got three kids. Like, and my wife won't be here, and I'm just like Wednesday they, only. They won't. Yeah. They won't listen to anything I say. So yeah. it's rough. <laughs> hey, it's I've rough. been there, dude. I, yeah, you know, yeah. You'll hear nothing from me on that. I I try to. I I have gone years where I tried. I used the COVID excuse for like two years. Yeah, I'm not going. Yeah, 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 like well, there's gonna be a lot of COVID up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, we better stay home. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would try to pretend when they were younger that it wasn't even Apple Festival week. Yeah, it never, <laughs> it works. never works. Somebody always tells them. Well, stop by our booth. How's All right. Oh, you got a booth? We got it right in front of the office. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. We, sure. And we have. Uh, yeah, we have maybe you can be on one of the live podcasts from the booth. From the booth. Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you in? Uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if well, it's brother. if it's not on Wednesday, yeah. Thanks for coming right. in, man. Yeah. We're gonna do this Cheers. again. I want every year we're we're getting a new Morgan. Right. Hey, by the it, way, man. what'd you think of that uh, IU or I, IU? Hey, man, or? I'm I'm rating that a, an eight out of ten. What would you rate that? Eight, eight out, out of ten, man. It's really good. Which uh, next of course, to your not favorite? Like, not like I like uh, I like Japanese beer, man. Oh, I didn't know that you were fluent. In I'm not fluent, but like I love a Sapporo. Or, you yeah. Know, so Don't Sapporo. forget your money either. 
<laughs> oh, hey, yeah, that's a <laughs> lot of money, man. Yeah, well, uh, I'm gonna take this dime too. Yeah, I mean, but uh, I, I'm not fluent, but I, I always try to try different ones when I go. Uh, to, to Japan? To, no, to a nice Asian ra- restaurant. Oh, you know, okay. Oh, yeah. They'll yeah, usually hit yeah. you with. Oh, yeah. Key. They've always got them. Oh. Dude, I try beers from everywhere. Well, yeah. I, I knew I couldn't be the one. I thought. Yeah, but this one, I mean, I, that's that tastes like uh, American up. IPA, man. Yeah, I mean, that was good. Yeah, it's good. That's is that top shelf in Japan? Good, good hoppy IPA. Uh, yeah, man. IPA is pretty rare in Japan. I, I was going to uh, say, yeah, I had one in Northern Ireland, and they were like, man, I mean. Ask him for an IPA. I mean, geez, what do you want, pal? Yeah, I mean, we got Guinness over here. Man. Yeah. yeah. Right. Do they have Guinness there in Japan? Oh, yeah, yeah you can get Guinness if you go to a bar. Huh. It's hard to find it. Is, how about American here. beers? Do you see Budweiser over there? Yeah. Yeah, you see Budweiser. It must be canned in Japan because it costs exactly the same as, like, Japanese beers. Okay. 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 Which is, I don't know, two, three bucks a can. Yeah. It's expensive. A can? Yeah. yeah. That beer costs you three bucks? Yeah. Man, hey, That's yeah. not bad. That's cheap. Oh, my goodness. Japan and their alcohol policies. <laughs> There's a lot of big tax. On I'm in, alcohol. dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm big, in. Big tax on it. Yeah, yeah on beer. Uh, there's some strange tax rules, but yeah, yeah. Say, well, there is here. Oh, Morgan, thanks for coming yeah. on, man. Come yeah, back see us again. Me. All right, you better. I'm gonna be mad. Okay, I'll post in the class of '99. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Start a start hey, a war start on war. there, man. Yeah, Get ugly. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. Come All right. see. Us. Hey, check out the uh, website chubbyguyspodcast.com. Buy some merch. Hey, Apple Festival, we got a limited edition shirt. Oh, we got a shirt coming, coming out. out. Chad and Pudge Kong. Yeah. Is all well, I, can I mean, say. It's, it's, you know what, guys? It's fucking awesome. Go ahead <laughs> yeah. Pre order. Limited edition. Like. Yeah. Limited edition. Dated yeah. and everything. Yeah. See you. See ya. Thanks.